you never know when your query journey is going to just like change in an instant. We have some insane lighting today. Today we're gonna to be talking about querying. My experience in the query trenches, how I signed with my literary agents, the ups and downs. It was a whole roller coaster. I want to also talk about what I would have done differently. And I hope it can be helpful for anyone who is starting their querying journey, is planning on querying soon, or just wants to know more about what the process is like if you are pursuing traditional publishing. I'm not gonna to touch upon too much like the systemic flaws of publishing, not in this video, but I will just say right off the bat, even though in this video, I'm obviously talking about a huge milestone and querying is not easy and all that kind of stuff. I, I do think that there are a lot of interesting conversations to be had around how difficult it is to get an agent and why the system is set up this way and how difficult the pro uh, whole process can be to navigate, especially if you are a marginalized writer. I will talk about just how horrible the first part of querying was. And I just hope that I can paint as much of a holistic picture of my journey because querying is incredibly lonely and it can be even more lonely and even more isolating than the writing itself. The amount of rejections that you're getting or any one rejection does not define the merit of your project. You never know when your query journey is going to just like change in an instant. So if you don't know who I am, if you stumbled upon this video, my name is Chris and I'm a speculative fiction writer. I write adult science fiction and fantasy. My earlier background, I guess, was more in literary fiction. This is my first time querying. I have not had any books published before. I've not had any prior agent representation. This is a question that I got a lot, which was how did you know you were ready to query? You're ready to query when your manuscript is polished and when you kind of figure out what the pitch of it is. Obviously the next question to that is how do you know when your manuscript is polished? The book is never gonna be perfect. So there's, there's no set answer. I think for me, a big portion of it was learning how to just hone my own intuition as a writer. I sort of intuitively know when I have hit a, hit a block and it's like, okay, this is as far as I think I can take it. I'm still unsure about certain things. I don't know if my pacing is, is perfect. I don't know if there's too much info dumping in act one, all these things. I compile those questions and I make sure to ask um, my alpha and beta readers you definitely shouldn't feel the need to rush into querying. Okay, that, that is slightly hypocritical of me to say because I definitely went head first into querying Local Heavens. I don't think I would have done that for any other project and I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. But um, yeah, especially if this is like your first completed project, like you, you really shouldn't rush querying because you can't really look objectively at a piece of work um, until you've had other eyes on it, until you've let it sit for a little bit. You have to be ready and willing to accept feedback at the feedback stage and if you think that you're not yet because you still have a lot of emotional attachment you still feel very defensive about the work that's fine but you should probably let the project sit for a while because i think the distance is important for you to be able to look at a work objectively this was a project that i was writing on and off for about three years i've talked about it before local heavens is it's been a years long passion project. I wrote a previous version of the premise th three years ago. I um, scrapped it and I wrote it from the ground up. So what I will say is that what, what I queried, because this was another question that I got was like, how much revising did you do before you queried? And I don't like to to think about things in drafts because every writer is different. So I don't want to to tell you like, yeah, five drafts is the magic number because it's not. Like it really depends on how polished your first drafts are and, and obviously a polished first draft requires less, less revisions. I will tell you full disclosure that what I queried was very close to a draft one. I went through like maybe a couple extra like l passes of like line edits and scene tweaking. And so you could say that what I queried was maybe a draft three, but I did not make developmental edits on this draft. So what I finished writing to what was queried was probably like 90% the same. This was not the first attempt at writing this book. And I had 
been fermenting and playing around with these ideas for like three years on and off. Um, so I feel like that's worth saying because a lot of times when we talk about our drafts and the writing itself, we're talking about like the actual writing itself and not all the other stuff that comes before that. So yeah, I finished the draft um, start of May, like first week of May. Um, and then I was revising it for about three weeks. May was like a revision month. I also sent it out to beta readers, this project, and I do not do this for other projects. Um, but one of the reasons why I was able to revise it so quickly is that I had readers reading the tr first draft as I was writing it. When I finished act one, I was starting act two and my brother was reading act one. And so I got feedback from him and then I would go back and, and do revisions on act one based on his feedback while I was still in the drafting process. So this is not writing advice necessarily. It's just, it is the process that I used for this book um, because I just really wanted feedback on it. I, I typically like to have a drafting process where it's just me and the work and I won't, you know, have anyone read it until it's done. But this project was different. I wanted people's opinion on it. I I think when I reached act three, I had Lynn and Kelly read act one. So I was kind of basically overlapping my drafting and my revision. Would I recommend this if you are a newer writer? I'm not sure. I think you have to be pretty comfortable. You have to kind of know what you want your personal vision of the work to be before you let in so much feedback. I was pretty open and receptive to feedback very early on in this drafting process in a way that I typically am not for my other projects. So the other reason that I felt ready to query is that I just didn't really get any like developmental feedback. All the feedback that I got was like very much kind of granular and so that's why a lot of my revision was focused on line editing like very 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 meticulous line editing so once i felt that the manuscript was in the best possible place i drafted my query letter and my synopsis and now i started sending out queries the most difficult part of the querying process for me was figuring out how to pitch this book like it is it is high concept like i i won't lie to you and say that it's not a high concept book but like i was saying it is a a literary cyberpunk novel like, like pacing wise feels very literary but um it is a cyberpunk world it is a it's a genre bendy kind of work work and it's not that that's not marketable it's just that if i'm looking at science fiction and fantasy agents who are who tend to you know want the real commercial books um you know big commercial hooks and you know fast-paced action like that's what kind of comes to your mind when you think science fiction fantasy the other thing i'll say is that one of the reasons that i was quite nervous about pitching this book and querying with it is that i i was breaking a lot of the usual writing rules that i I typically follow all these things. <laughs> I do not do this for any other project and I probably never will, but this book in particular is, it has a very, you know, kind of languid, slow pace to it. Um, there is info dumping in not just the first few pages, but almost at the start of every single chapter in the first act. Um, my beta readers will tell you that there is definitely info dumping. Lynn and Kelly actually, with their feedback, I, I, I cut out some of the info dumping and I like rearranged it because it, they were like this is a lot. The other thing is that despite being a cyberpunk project um, and when, when you think cyberpunk and you think about popular cyberpunk media it always has a very like quick inciting incident and that was just not the case for this book. The character voice is is he talks a lot in his head um it's m maybe not everyone's cup of tea and the protagonist is very passive he's he's not someone who actively uh, wants want something at the start of the book. And the other huge roadblock, aside from the fact that I was writing this like literary book that was wrapped up in a cyberpunk world, sci-fi, not a genre that sells as well as others. A lot of the agents who were like science fiction fantasy agents had a preference for fantasy, which is unfortunate um, in publishing, but that was just the truth of it. I it, it, Sci-fi is not a super easy genre to query. This is not me trying to like give any market advice because the market is so dumb and unpredictable anyway. But yeah, I just thought I would mention that. That was like another thing 
anxiety worry that i had like i took a chance anyway to answer again the question of like how do you know if you're ready to query i was so passionate about this project i am so passionate about this project i just knew i would like beat myself up if i had this manuscript sitting and it was something that i was proud of and i, I wasn't giving it a chance you know so i drafted my query letter and my synopsis when you're submitting to an agent you want to look at their wish list you want to see what kind of stories they're interested in and you say dear agent's name um i'm seeking representation for book and you you have to mention word count age genre and then you state something from their manuscript wish list that's relevant to what you're querying typically a query letter might also include uh comps comparative titles this book is similar to these current popular books or whatever. A synopsis is a summary of your book, um, including spoilers. It details the entire plot to beginning, middle, and end. What I found was most common was agents are going to ask you for a query letter and sample pages. So the first five to 25 pages, sometimes 50 pages if they like want a lot of material. Some agents want query letter, synopsis, and sample pages. And then there are some agents, like one or two that I queried that wanted just a query letter and nothing else. At this point, when I was putting together my query package, I was kind of stressed because I felt like uh, querying has come to a point where like agents want to see if, if you know how to position and market your book. Um, which is why they ask for comps. It's why they ask like for for how high concept your book is. Sometimes like w with this very like genre bendy work, I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know how many people are gonna be down for this. So I sent out my first batch of queries, which was about like, I think it was about 10 or so in that first week. One or two days, I got my first form rejections. A form rejection is a non-personalized rejection where the agent is basically like sorry this is not for me best of luck and they don't give you any feedback on why they rejected you um this is very common for agents now because they get so many submissions you are most likely going to get four rejections the first form rejections are they suck obviously this is this is true for most writers prepare yourself for them even if you think you're prepared prepare yourself for them because i was definitely crushed i think when those first ones came in and the other thing is do not do this but i did not tell anyone that i was querying i was scared for people to be excited for me i didn't want my friends and family to ask me how querying was going i don't recommend this i would recommend even if you don't tell like everyone in your life have like one or two other people even better if they're also writers even better if they're also querying like have a community that is going to be there to support you through all of this because it's difficult it is it, you're gonna need a support system um to kind of be for your own well-being so eventually i did tell you know like lynn and kelly and people in my life that i was querying and, and immediately it actually made me feel so much better and rejections didn't hit as hard so yeah i think it was around the 20-ish mark like i had queried maybe 20 agents after two weeks and i had a mix of form rejections radio silence like no reply um agents take a really long time to reply these days sometimes like up to 12 weeks some agents will just not reply to you at all and that's they'll just do that instead of sending a form rejection i was feeling awful like these first two weeks i was barely writing it was so difficult for me to even think about writing i took a break and this is also something that you should definitely do is take a break don't feel like you have to like send out a, a query every single day just to kind of take my mind off things i started working on um a new fantasy book technically a revision of, an, of a previous fantasy book this is where things start to get a little twisty turny one day after querying for about two two and a half weeks i decided to make a mood board for local heavens i've posted it um on twitter this was purely for fun this was just to share with my other writer friends um it wasn't for like a pitch contest or anything like that a few hours after i had posted it a junior agent from a very reputable agency reached out and was like hey this seems cool send this to me and so they were currently closed to submissions at the time but they were you know soliciting a queer my query uh just kind of based on this mood board which was like if that doesn't tell you like the role that twitter plays in the writing community now i don't know what does but uh, i was really excited to get this solicit this agent was 
someone that I had wanted to query, I was just waiting for them to like open their submission box. So the fact that they reached out was very exciting. So I sent them my query letter and sample pages. I think I sent them like 10 sample pages. And the same day they came back full request. That was my first full request. They also asked um, if I was writing, if I had any other manuscripts that were completed, especially fantasy. Um, so I told them that I, was currently revising a fantasy book but i was still in the early stages of it and it wasn't written yet i'm literally just brainstorming i told them like i i'm revising based off of like an old concept and they were like okay well they wanted to know more about the project and so i sent along additional material for the fantasy project i would not have sent over so much material if this agent um wasn't from a reputable agency. Seemed like our tastes would line up really well. Um, like I was very interested in working with this agent. I was happy to go back and forth with them. I, I wanna make this note because like, I, I understand that it can be very exciting when an, any agent is like expressing interest, but you shouldn't just like put in so much time and effort to like prepare materials for an agent unless you're like you think he would actually like to work with them and that was the case for me i sent them all the material and then um it took a few weeks before i heard back from them more things were happening so this is where where my motivation dipped 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 so low yeah around the time that i had all that material out with the this one agent the agent who had previously requested a partial for local heavens they finally got back to me they had my partial for two and a half weeks and it was a rejection rejection on a partial request or a full request it hurts way worse than a form rejection because your hopes are higher this rejection was so complimentary i i actually posted it up in my last vlog put it here again if you're curious i was fortunate enough to go through this querying journey, not having to deal with any like unnecessarily rude agents or mean rejections. Like this was such a compassionate rejection, but it still stung really bad. And if you watch like the vlog where I, I got that rejection, like you can see how dejected I was. It's one of those rejections that's like, there's nothing I can do about that really. It, Cause the agent is saying it's just their personal taste, but obviously the fear that you have as a writer at that point is like, if that's your personal taste, like, is that gonna be the personal taste of all these other agents? And so there's no actionable feedback there. And so I just kind of like took it, I accepted it and I was like, I'm gonna feel sad about this and then I will just eventually move on. This was June, by the way, the basically the entire month of June. I sent out more queries and I think at this point I had sent out a total of 35 queries. At the end of June, four weeks into the querying process, I was planning to send out more, but then the agent who had my full manuscript and had the additional fantasy material under consideration, they got back to me and they said they wanted to get on a call. This was not an offer call. So this agent had read my material and they said, I like it. I'm particularly interested in your fantasy work. And um, they were like, I know you're making revisions. And so I want to get on a call and talk about your revision plan. So I said, okay. And we got on the call, I told them, hey, my new fantasy book is like, these are all the changes I'm making. And I kind of told them what the new plot was. I told them how the characters are changing. And I said, you know, I can send you a synopsis of, of this new book. Remember, this book was not written yet. I was still brainstorming it, um, but I had a synopsis and I was like, I'll send you the synopsis. Um, so we got off the call, sent the synopsis the next morning. And then they were like, I'm officially offering you representation. And I was so excited. This first offer is like what I was talking about in my last vlog. So that's when we finally got on our offer call. So I had two calls with this agent and on our offer call, it also went really well. Um, I got to know more about their agenting style. I was looking for a pretty editorial agent cause I want someone, you know, that's gonna be able to bounce off. I can bounce ideas off of. So, but the main thing I think that came out of this call was that they said that they liked Local Heavens and they would like to represent it as well. Um, but they also said that Local Heavens 
being a sci-fi, being a literary sci-fi, they asked if I would be comfortable with my fantasy work potentially being my debut project. If you've watched like any of my vlogs, you'll you'll keep hearing me saying that Local Heavens is a weird book, Local Heavens is a weird book. But I think my fantasy work was a lot more marketable. It has it's adult, but it has that kind of like new adult YA crossover potential. And it's it's just something that's like very marketable. And so I was like, you know, yeah, if it if the, my fantasy work does have to be the day my debut project, like that's a reality that I have prepared for. And I talked to their clients. That's another part of the process when you are signing with a literary agent. When they offer you representation, you don't say, yes, I'm taking it. Um, you typically take two weeks. You take the time to read over the agency contract to consider your options to notify the other agents that you have an offer and you also um, should do your due diligence and talk to this agent's clients to make sure that on the writer side they enjoy working with this agent and just figuring out like how they like working with this agent and what their strengths and weaknesses are and all that kind of stuff so i should say that after i took a few days to really process the call and to think about shelving local heavens i remember feeling a little bit apprehensive about the prospect of basically having local heavens just sitting idle and and not doing anything while i was working on the fantasy book this was the craziest two weeks of my life not only was my day job like my nine to five like super busy for these two weeks like just i just got unnaturally busy at work i also had to send so many emails and talk to so many people I was consulting with my writer friends, I was consulting with all of the agent's clients, and it was just, it was so crazy, like, the past two weeks. Um, I got my offer on a Friday, and that the same day of the call, I sent out all of the emails to the other agents. Over the weekend, I got a bunch of requests, and by Monday, seven agents had requested the manuscript. Along with getting requests, I also got a whole bunch of rejections slash like step asides agents basically saying like they couldn't you know read the book in time so they were stepping aside a big portion of the agents who actually respond to me with rejections like during this period they were basically saying like they weren't like flat out rejections like some some rejections were like oh yeah this project isn't right for me um but congratulations but i did get a quite a few surprising amount of responses that were like this seems really great i can i'm so happy that th this project is being placed with an agent and they basically gave like personalized feedback the sample pages and that was something i was not expecting and i was really grateful to get that external validation and to get that feedback so the one thing i'll say about getting your first offer of representation you should feel pretty good about signing with that agent like if you get an offer and you're not sure that you actually want to work with that person you don't have to feel compelled to accept it because what could happen if you tell the other agents that you have an offer and that you're like oh i need to get a reply in like two weeks or something there are agents who might have been interested in your manuscript but because they can't meet the deadline they might step aside that's the case for a lot of the rejections that i got after i um got the first offer i just want to say that because i think a lot of the times writers can feel like they have to just take whatever they're given if you like the agent but you're not sure if they're like the person that you want to work with and you think you're going to need extra time you can ask for that extra time um if that agent really wants to work with you they should be willing and happy to you know, provided there are no extenuating circumstances but they should be pretty willing and happy to give you that extra time i just asked for the two weeks because in all honesty i did not think that anything was gonna happen in those two weeks anyway and i was wrong on that note i will say that if i could do one thing differently about this querying process even though i really liked that first agent I would have asked for an extra few days, at least, if not a third week. You never know what kind of interest you're gonna get. You can truly never predict something. Even if you are really sure that you wanna work with an agent, you never know and you should 
have the space and the time to be able to make an informed decision. Less than a week after I had sent out the manuscripts to the agents who had asked, I got an email from a second agent who said, I know you're at a deadline, I'm only halfway through, but I like it, I wanna to talk to you. So we set up a call for Monday, the following week. And this second week, like I had to make a decision by the Friday. If I needed an extension, I probably could have asked for one. But again, I was just kind of like, okay, like I didn't really know what was going on. So I spoke with the second agent on Monday. This agent was also amazing. And what really stood out to me about this call from the second agent is that we went like we dove pretty quickly into talking about local heavens on a very like detailed level like so obviously as soon as we started they said i read it and i really really like it and i think you have something here and i want to work with you on this they talked a bit about their agenting style and then after we went back and forth about that we pretty much like went down into like editorial discussion which i really appreciated because that was kind of the main questions that i had for this agent was what did you like about it and what do you want to what do you think it needs to to be even better i'm really grateful for like how sharp this agent's feedback was like all the thing like they, they really understood the work first of all so that was like the big green flag um but then on top of that i really liked a lot of their feedback on you know what they wanted out of the ending and things that they would have changed and ways that they wanted to really strengthen the ending um, the one thing that I also really liked was that this agent really connected with and understood the main character and that was one of my biggest fears was that the main character because he's so passive that not everyone would connect with him and this book is just like full of all these really unlikable characters and I was just so happy that this agent really like understood the work and I really appreciated sort of how deep and, and detailed they outlined um, what they would change if we were to work together. The one thing that I asked them at this point was like, do you think that this could be a debut project, you know, based on the market, with it being sci-fi, with it being sort of a weird literary mix thing? And they said, well, I can't sell what I don't have and you have this book and why not try, basically? And I think that really changed my perspective on local heavens because I had kind of gotten into my head about how this wouldn't be like a smart debut project and that if I do this then I might be locked into sci-fi or cyberpunk. Um, they, I asked them about what submission looks like and, and what it might look like for a project like this. So submission by the way is um, the process of once you've finished polishing the manuscript with your agent and they think it's in a good place they will start contacting editors to see if any editors want it. I asked them, what is what, what do you think about putting this on, on submission? What kind of publishers would you would you want to send this to? And, and we talked a little bit about their submission plan and, and how they like to approach submission. It was a really good conversation. I was starting to envision local heavens in the market and it just got me really excited about the project again. At the end of the call, they officially offered me representation. They sent me the, the contact info of their clients. So I immediately reached out to their clients and all of this agent's clients loved working with them. Um, I went back and forth with two of them and um, this agent's very, very editorial. I thought that that was, so that was a Monday. And I, the other thing that I did is that I, I sent out another nudge to the agents who still had my full manuscript. So I think at this point there was like four of them left who hadn't rejected me yet. Um, and then I also let them know that I had a second offer. I started messaging my writer friends. And at this point I was going back and forth with Lynn. Um, and then Lynn put me into contact with one of her friends who has so much deep querying and publishing knowledge. And so I was just trying to solicit advice on like, okay, how do you approach a, a multiple offer situation? I took the whole evening to think about it. And by the end of the evening, I realized that the second agent just had a really um, sharp and actionable editorial vision for local heavens but i was still kind of going back and forth like and i wanted to make sure that i was you know taking in all considerations basically and just when i thought the journey couldn't get 
more insane. Tuesday morning, one of my top agents, this was one of the first agents I ever queried. Like I cannot express like how shocking this was. When this agent had requested the, the full manuscript back when I got my first offer, I was already like, oh my God, this agent wants to read my work. When they got back to me again Tuesday morning and they said, I want to get on a call with you. I was like, oh my God, I was shocked. I was so shocked and excited. They were like, I know you're on a deadline, but can you, like I'm out of office. <laughs> can you talk Thursday afternoon? Keep in mind, my deadline was Friday. From a perspective of like how knowledgeable are they and, um, you know, how strong of an agent are they? I had no doubt about that because they have such a great history and reputation. The one thing that what I was nervous about going into the call was how much did they connect with Local Heavens? Are they passionate about the project? And if so, what elements were they passionate about? And that's what I was really wanting to see going into the call. One day before the deadline, we got on the call. The main things that, okay, I'm so like frazzled right now because when they started talking, I like blacked out. I was like, I cannot believe that this agent liked the book. So the, the one thing that they said is that they feel like the book is in their sweet spot. It's the literary voice with the commercial hook. It's what they like to represent. It's what they like to read. We're really passionate about the story from that angle. And then when we talked a little bit more deeply about it, they said the line level writing, they really loved the world building and the technology and the way that the book feels really timely in a, in a thematic way. I think what blew me away about speaking with them was how sincere their passion for the book was. I, these agents who have, you know, very established client lists, you don't know how like hands-on they are and how much they care about the stories themselves. How genuine and authentically passionate this agent was about um, not just the concept of the book, but everything that I was trying to do. They asked me about, you know, my intention with the work and why I wrote it. They asked me about how I wanted to find success as a writer. And so we were really speaking on these like career level things. The other thing that stood out to me from this call was how much this agent really adores their clients. Like the primary feeling I got when speaking with them was just aside from being blown away at the amount of like experience and industry knowledge this person has, but also just how safe I felt. I, the more we spoke, the more I felt like I would learn so much getting to work from this with this agent on both like an editorial level and also on the publishing side. And then when they started going like deep into their submission plans and the things that they are envisioning for this project, the tables really started to turn for me because it was so cathartic to see someone who you know, reads and champions books for a living, right? See this project and go, I think you really wrote something really important. I think it just threw my whole querying journey into perspective and made me realize that like, things can change in an instant and you should never, ever, ever write yourself off. There was a point in like the dark early two weeks of, of querying where I almost wanted to just stop querying the book. And I'm so glad I didn't, um, obviously, but I think that's what made me realize that like all the rejections that came after don't matter because when you do find that person, everything is worth it. When you hear someone saying things like, I, I think you wrote something really good. I think this project could be really, you know, huge and all this kind of stuff. You should always be apprehensive about anyone saying that to you but i think because this agent in particular i have admired the clients on their list for years the experience to to back up what they're saying but aside from that the thing that made me really secure in this conversation was actually when the agent said i'm never going to guarantee you anything publishing is extremely volatile you have publishers shuttering their imprints i won't get in to that in this video but it's just like the industry gets more and more turbulent and it, it continues to implode in all of these ways and so when you have an agent tell you hey i'm not gonna tell you that i'm gonna put you on a bestseller list but what i am gonna do is i'm gonna fight for you and do everything that i can for you I ended up speaking for like an hour and a half it was a pretty long call immediately after we got off the call the agent sent me so much material to review they sent me examples of editorial like edit letters that they send their clients uh, and it was just like such a great insight into 
their process. They had me connect with their uh, clients and this was Thursday afternoon, keep in mind. So literally like by the next day I had to make a decision. So I went back and forth with a couple of their clients and Friday morning I got on a call with one of their authors. I think this was the tipping point for me. It was Friday morning speaking with this author and just knowing like all the different ways that this agent really fights for them. And I think that's the moment that I knew that I had made my decision and I really wanted to sign with this third agent. A lot of writers will tell you when you get on an offer call, you will know when you wanna work with an agent. Like it just hits you so profoundly. And I think that is kind of like the deep emotional connection that I had with this third agent. I'm quickly switching to my phone because obviously my camera died. I've been filming this video for over an hour now. A lot of writers will tell you, trust your gut. When you sign with an agent like or in a multiple offer situation, like your gut will tell you what the right thing to do is. You know, to just to speak on the more tangible things, examined all the agents um, on three sort of main categories. The first one was excitement for the project. How excited were they about Local Heavens and about the rest of my work? I wanted to make sure that they weren't just like, yeah, that sounds good. I wanted them to be like, I love it. You know, like that's what, that sounds like something I really, really want to read. You really do want to make sure that like your agent is, is passionate about your work because they're gonna have to pitch it. It's just so much easier to work with an agent who like understands what you're writing and why you're writing it. So then the second thing, editorial vision for Local Heavens specifically, because Local Heavens is the book that I queried. It's the one that I wrote. I wanted to know what kind of um, changes they wanted to make. Because if the changes they were proposing were ones that didn't really fit what I wanted with the project, then that was would kind of you know sway my decision away from it and then the third and last thing is industry experience so what is their history of sales what is their connection to editors their submission plans how they sort of tackle submission i had to learn very quickly okay this is how i should make my decision and i have to shout out <laughs> all of the writers and people in my life who helped me you know talk through these things because i was so unprepared so much of publishing is luck and timing and i think i got really lucky that's not to discount my hard work or anything but there's so many variables in publishing because it's so unpredictable you kind of do have to be like on your toes and and sort of ready to make those decisions yeah it was a mix of just all those things i talked about and also like my gut feeling so there are a few more things that i will quickly touch upon the thing that i feel like some people might be curious about just because of like the role that social media plays in publishing these days did having a youtube channel affect my querying journey did it make it easier in any way and the honest answer is not at all a social media following i think has to be quite sizable for it to really play a role in you know getting an agent or a book deal or something like that i would even say like 100k plus is when you might be looking at something substantial. I had actually some drafts where I mentioned in my query letter, like in the bi bio part of my query letter, I mentioned I was a content creator. But that was only like a few drafts and not form rejections. And so your pitch definitely matters the most and your pros. I also got a lot of questions about just like query letter tips and stuff. So just to touch upon things that I didn't talk about earlier, there are any tips I could give for writing the query letter itself. Look up sample examples of successful query letters. Um, the other thing I would do is, I remember I was reading a lot of book blurbs, so I would like go on Goodreads. And my structure was typically like, oh my god, I wish I could show you guys the query letter, but the premise of the book is not something that I can share yet at this point, but first paragraph to establish setting. Um, second paragraph to introduce your character and like their motivation and then third paragraph to reveal what the book's hook is the inciting incident the main conflict the choice the character has to make it's best not to say like and then the main character is faced with a tough choice or something you want to say what that tough choice is right your your query letter should also include a short biography it can literally be like two sentences um if you have writing credits or awards or anything like that you can mention it and then the other thing that i put 
that most query letters I think have these days is comps, so comparative titles. The thing about comps is that you don't have to comp just to plot or tropes, like you can also comp to things like atmosphere, tone, and theme. I was having a really tough time with comparative titles for Local Heavens, so uh, the ones that I used as default black mirror the tech and the dystopian vibes and the, the social commentary and then i also comped to this is how you lose the time war because that was that's a very popular book and it's an example of like really strong sort of literary speculative mix i would change these comps depending on the agent that i was querying so if there's an agent who has on their wish list a book that they really like and it's something that's you know somewhat similar to local heavens i would comp to that so make sure you're addressing it directly to the agent that you're querying keep your personalization short if you can take the time to do this you don't have to but if you're querying an agent who's there's a book from an author that they represent that you really like and that like sort of fits like matches with what you're querying it can be worth mentioning so that the agent sort of knows that they that you've done your your research on them yeah, i i only did this for like two agents so that's why i mentioned it have someone proofread your query letter and synopsis preferably another writer um and even more preferably someone who has queried before and knows the process and then don't query with your first draft if you write a draft and you think you like it like sit on it for a few days your query letter probably shouldn't be longer than like one page i wrote a pretty long query letter like i think mine was like 400 words maybe a little bit longer but as long as it fits on on one page and it should be fine other tips don't query your top agents right away i did not follow this rule the reason you people recommend not doing that is because if you decide you want to like find a mistake in that first draft you know you kind of want to like do your mid-list agents first just in case i did not do that yeah but if, i guess if i had to do things differently i, I probably would have saved my top agents for a second batch because i do i do think my query was a little bit stronger after about one or two weeks of querying the fact that the fact that i did sign with an agent who read the first draft of my query is kind of insane the rest of local heavens is high concept enough that I got lucky in that way. Yeah, so my first batch of agents was about like 10, about two to three agents a day every few days for the next couple of weeks. Then when I hit like the 20-ish mark, I sent out a new query every time I got a rejection or if it had been a few days since I had gotten any rejections, then I would just like send out one or two more. So I just kind of like did, I didn't do it all at once. I would send out one or two, max three queries in one day. And the reason for that is like, it, it takes a long time to like query an agent because you have to research them a little bit. And one thing that I wish that I had actually done sooner is to make query packages for quick reference. So there are some agents who they want five sample pages, some want 20 sample pages, some want 50 sample pages or something. But I wish I had done, and I think what I would have done eventually if I was still querying, um, is to make like different submission packages. So I would have made separate like Word documents or whatever that, that has the five pages, the 10 pages, the 20 pages, 50 pages, so that I could easily copy paste or easily like send it because what I was doing was I was like going into the full manuscript you know counting the pages and then having to it wasn't as efficient and then the other thing I did was I kept records of every single query letter that I was writing so two folders called active letters and then rejections just to keep track of like which comps I was using for which agents and I just like to have a record of every single letter that I was sending. Whenever I would get a rejection, I would move the letter into the rejections folder. I could easily like keep track of all of the active letters that I had out. I was also asked, do you think Local Heavens is going to be published soon? That is not in my hands, unfortunately. The last question I got was, will you share an excerpt of Local Heavens that you're proud of to celebrate these query wins? The kids are hungry, please feed us. Okay, the book is a little bit hard to share snippets of. So I'll try to find something. Hang on. There was the noise and the stench and the ad drones galloping over Times Square, the holograms more detailed and opaque than I'd ever seen before. They made a colorful ceiling of advertisements that shone brighter than the afternoon sun. There were the androids too, demanding patronage in front of shops and fuming food stalls, 
police hover cruisers floating above us like beasts of prey and limbless beggars nestled into shadows trying to duck out of sight with every passing cruiser. Ah, uh, that is it. Thank you for watching to the end of the video if you did. I know this was super long, but I just kind of wanted to make sure it was as detailed as possible. It's a huge milestone and I'm just so, so excited. If you guys have any more querying questions, let me know, I'll do my best to answer them. I also have a post about this up on my blog where I think I answered basically all the questions that I answered here, but it's in more of like an organized contained format. So you can check that out if you want. Thank you guys as always for hanging out with me on this channel and for supporting the channel. That is it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will see you guys in my next video. And